Oh, hello there. What's up, guys? I didn't see you there. Welcome back to another online battle of Third Age Total War. This is a massive 4 versus 4, good versus evil, but that really depends on your perspective. I mean, if you're an orc, obviously you think you're good, but I doubt I have any orc subscribers out there, but I'm sure some of you guys do look like orcs. Oh, burn! Okay, so on a more serious note, let us now look at the armies that are going to be participating in today's conflict. We will start with the good guys again depending on your perspective you disgusting orcs we have gondor teaming up with the high elves and then we've got the free peoples of eriador and we have the kingdom of dale who is watching the flank now looking at the baddies we have harad and he is facing dale we've got rune the great golden army and then down here we have isengard the great powerful isengard and we have Mordor, the servants of Sauron. This is going to be a really awesome battle. The evil factions seem pretty solid. They, they all seem pretty good. It should be a fairly close battle. Very cinematic. And let's go ahead and get started with the army comps. We will go in the same, the same order that I showed you the factions. We will start with Gondor, commanded by Legate. He is bringing some Blackroot Veil vale archers, some Athel Athelian rangers. And for his infantry, he's got guards of Osgiliath. He has one city Citadel Guard, two units of Dismounted Swan Knights, two units of Gondor Infantry. He's got some Fountain Guard, a trebuchet to harass the enemy. Two units of Mounted Swan Knights, this unit has the General, and he has two units of Gondor Cav. So that is his force. Let us now move on to the High Elves, uh, which is commanded by Fluffaloe. He's got some Eldar Enway Spearmen and Swordsmen, about two units each. He's got some uh, warrior archers, and for his really crap infantry, he's got some sword quindies. So he's got like four units of them. Waiting in reserve, he's got some Mithlin nobles and some smiths. And he's got uh, some Eldar Enway nobles, which uh, this is his general. He's got some lancers and some horse archers. Now we will move on to the free peoples of Ariador, commanded by Awesome108. He's bringing a ton of awesome infantry. He's got some bandits, which are pretty much like overly glorified peasants. He's got a couple units of battle-ready Dunedain. He's got the Arnor men-at-arms. He's commanding some dismounted Dunedain knights. Arnor pikemen, so two units of them. He's got some Greenway guard, Dunedain rangers. He has hobbit archers, so adorable in the front lines. They're fighting for their, their people and their, their, their shire, their hobbiton. And that's pretty much it for his army. He also has uh, some cav over here, some Arnor knights, and the knights of Anum Anumanas. Let us now look at Dale, who's bringing a lot of spears. He's got some barding marksmen, which is a pretty solid archer force. He also has some barding herd, which is really good at holding the front lines. He's also bringing some ran uh, ran rangers, some rangers, and uh, he's got two units of Dale swords masters. Really cool. He's bringing earls, so mounted earls and some dismounted earls, along with a ballista. So that is his force. By the way, his name is Feed Me Now. Let us look at the baddies now. Com uh, we'll start with Harad, commanded by Jokadale. In the front lines, he's got Dismounted Serpent Guard mixed in with some South Ron Pikemen. A very nasty front line. Then he's bringing the Muhad Tribesmen, which is a really cool Javi unit. They look awesome. And he's got about three units of South Ron Archers. And he's bringing some Trollmen of Harad. He's bringing the Catapult and some, like, three units of Serpent Guard. He also has a couple units or maybe just one unit of the Varig Lancers. Now we will move on to the Rooney Boys, the Golden Army. Commanded by Couchcut 23, he is bringing some clan crossbowmen, a ballista. He's also got the Lark, uh, Luke Narrim archers, which is the very elite archers, the, the Golden Archers. He's also bringing a couple units of clan guard. He's bringing the Varig Lancers. He's got like two units of them. He's got the Luke Flag Rim, the, the very elite infantry, heavy infantry. And he's also bringing some Spearmen, the, or more of a, like a pike unit, the Luke Gamp Rim. He's got some heavy cab, the Luke Innis Rim. And he's bringing also some horse archers, so the, the Vareg Raiders. So that is his force. It's a pretty small force, but a pretty professional force. Now looking at Isengard, this is just a classic Isengard army. He's bringing guards of Orthanc, two units, and then he's got Urukai pikemen. So he's got a ton of them. Look at all the pikemen. This is ridiculous. I love it. It looks so cool. 
and he's bringing some berserkers on the flank waiting in reserve and he also has about four units of urukai infantry and he's bringing about three units of warg riders uh he's not bringing a lot of archers which i think is very concerning because if you look at his positioning here he's gonna get harassed really bad like it's gonna be really tough to try to take on the elves here because you don't really have anything to counter the elves they got a really good position and they've got superior bows looking at the final army commanded by master awesome he's bringing some Uruk archers, he's got some guard, he has some Uruk halberds, some Uruks, uh, he's bringing two units of black Numenorians, and he's got two units of Olok Hai. So those are the armies, uh, those are the armies guys, so let's go ahead and play this. Alright, whew, that took a while. If you sat through that and watched me go through all the army comps, well, hats off to you. Because I probably couldn't sit through that either, that's why I add the, uh, the, little, the little annotation to let you skip to the beginning of the fight. Most people generally don't care like exactly what everyone is is bringing, but I still like to do it because I personally do like to see. I mean, usually not with like eight armies, but I like to see what everyone like all the units that are about to do battle. Uh, so the skirmishing has begun over here between the free peoples and rune, the runic people, and I think it's going to start with a nice charge from the Arnor knights. I think they're going to go for some crossbows. It is a little choppy here at the beginning of this fight, but that's okay. We will, uh, we will wait for it to smooth out. Uh, Rune is now sending, for sending forward some Lancers to try to protect their crossbows, but it's going to be awfully close. Let's see. Is he going to stop the charge? No, yes, kind of. Not really. He Oh, man. He killed a ton of crossbows there. Uh, but the Cav are now stuck in melee against the Lancers. And that's going to be it for that situation. I think he's going to disengage there. If we look at the other situation here, the Elves are firing upon the Urukai. And they are getting tons, tons of kills. <laughs> this is really bad for Isengard. Also, you know that one unit of archer they got? Well, they're dead. The, <laughs> the elves did a really good job at charging him down. So he has no skirmishing capability whatsoever. It's going to be really rough for Isengard. Their only option now is either to run away or just charge. He has a couple cav units, the the wargs, but they are no match to the elven lancers, which is kind of tragic. I personally think wargs should be stronger than cav, except for like Rohirrim cav, because they're riding on giant like beast. Like that's terrifying. That should be very nasty and deadly. Why? Why is this so choppy? So choppy. But Isengard. Okay, hold hold the phone. We will pause real quick. There we go. Hopefully that helps simmer it down. Uh, he's trying to use his spears to run down the elven cab, but that's just not going to do anything there, guys. He's just too slow. He can't do anything about it. What's going on here? Oh, we got a little charge from the uh, Black Numenorians going in. Going deep in the Gondorian lines. Not really. It's just a little cab battle. As the general is in the fight. And he's already bloodied up. Look at it. He's like, I'm going to kill the general. I'm going to be here all. Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> That was your one chance, brave Gundorian. We got wargs now pushing forward. Here we go. The infantry is now pushing forward. Uh, this is his only hope. This is all Isengard can do. And look at the weird formation, though. He's got two units of... What is he doing? He's got three units of pikemen spread out going forward. He needs more troops up there to fight because he's going to get surrounded, which the elves are doing right now as we speak. They're sending over some spearmen to flank around the pikemen. Oh, we've got Mordor now charging in as well. And some wargs. And oh, we got a catapult firing in the background. Oh, we got a kill over there on some Udo Cowbirds. Look at this. Both sides joining in in this beautiful fight. But what is he going to do against these guards of Osgiliath? The pikemen are just too strong. You should never try to fight pikemen head on like this. Trust me, I've tried many times. They're just too good. You've got to find another, another way to break through. Oh, and he's got his trolls over here doing battle this is nice uh, those gondor swordsmen they're like oh god giant trolls they're getting just surrounded that's a lot of olog hi well, let's get a little bird's eye view of the the situation uh, if we head back over here there's a little bit of a cab fight going on here guys uh, he's got oh got some spears charging into this uh, cab unit he needs to get out of there he cannot fight spears Oh, here comes a, a volley. Oh, my goodness. 
right into the Rangers. That was great. Also, he's got a good charge from the Serpent Guard into the Rangers as well. All right, so let's head back over here because it looks like... Yes, the fighting is still going on between Isengard and the High Elves. But finally, he is pushing forward his reserves, but it's a bit too late. It's it, The pikemen, look at this, the pikemen are getting surrounded. There was a pike unit in here. Now they're gone because they're dead. They are dead, slaughtered by elven blades. Uh, what a massive battle this is. And the, Oh, we got the berserkers in there. He's doing okay over here, Isengard. With his infantry, and then he's got... Look at this, he's got the spears surrounded. But here comes a counter flank, a counter charge by the Lancer. Oh, Cav, and they... Are, they just slaughtered that unit. Let's see, they're down to 13. They broke now, they're fighting to the death. And that's why you gotta have something to deal with the Cav. You must have Cav... Like, if you're gonna bring wards, then bring more wards. Because Cav is so deadly, and the good factions have such great Cav. So this looks very uh, hopeless for Isengard. Oh, and there goes... Oh, is that... Is, I think that's Mordor's general. Yeah, that was Mordor's general. Oh, look, there's just pockets of fighting everywhere. Oh, the Swan Knight's coming over to help their elven brethren. 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 <laughs> Good charge at the back of the uh, the berserkers here. Not that it was really needed. It, it, he was winning that fight regardless. And this is what's left of Mordor. A small pocket of troops. Uh, the trolls are still at it, but since they lost their general, their mor their morale is going to be terrible. The trolls doing battle with the Black Root Vale archers. The Fountain Guard. So awesome. I love the Fountain Guard. It looks so great. Oh, and the catapult firing in the back there. Actually killing some of their own ally, the, the Elven... Um, that was actually Trebuchet. Killing the, the Elven Lancers. So yeah, this is an obvious victory for the men and Elves. Let's now head over to this way because it looks like, yes, the battle is about to begin. Ooh, did the Earls try to charge into Pikemen? That's nasty. Oh, and the Ballista is now firing at the uh, Southron archers. Oh, here comes another volley. Oh, just burnt that guy. Rip in peace. Here we go. Old, old brave men of Harad. The men of Dale are weak and cowardly. First sending up some spears. So the battle over here has taken place. Now, oh, the general for Isengard is getting gutted. Like a pig. Oh, that's nasty. Alright, so if the evil factions want to win here, it's really down to Harad and Rune. And Rune is pushing forward as we speak as well. Here we go. Oh, and the bandits are charging in first right into the Golden Horde of Justice. Oh, uh, yes. Very nice charge there from Rune. Uh, like, I, like I was saying earlier, Rune's got to win. Rune and Harad's got to easily win their fight. Because that's what uh, Gondor and the High Elves did. And if they want to beat them, they have to have a lot of troops left over. Look at all the arrows coming overhead. That is great. Look at Rune slowly pushing forward their forces. The battle ready Dunedain now engaging in the fight. Here's a bird's eye view of the situation. We do have some Cav flanking around. Trying to cut down the Arnor men at arms. It looks like Rune is having a little bit of a... A little bit of a... Well, he's struggling to contain the the massive number of troops of uh, the free peoples of, of, of Eriador. My goodness. My goodness. Words are challenging today. All right, here we go. More fighting going on. The barding herd taking on the pikes. And it just seems like Dale is just throwing his troops into uh, Harad's pikes. The Haradrim pikes. We also have the half trolls now in the fight. Yeah, why isn't he using his cab a little bit? Oh, jeez. Oh, yes. Taking out this barding marksman. That's going to be really useful for later on in the fight. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not trying to maneuver a little bit. I mean, if you look at the lines of Harad, it's really short. Like, you can maneuver some troops around them. Oh, and the Muhad tribesmen. They're about to throw their jabbies. 
Look at look at all the arrows flying through the air. It's kind of hard to see, but that is ridiculous. Those barding marksmen are getting tons of kills. And they're going to do something about it. Oh, they got to charge off on the uh, barding herd over here. The serpent guard. Let's see. Are they going to continue to push? Oh, they're going to run past it. Nope, they're going for this unit. Oh, my God. The chaos. Oh, yes. He is going for the rangers. Charge, man. Kill the scum rangers. The ballista still firing. All right. So, let's see what's going on with this situation over here. Rune still fighting his heart out. That seems like it's a pretty even, but again, oh, there goes the general for Dale. Oh man, dead from oh, and then the general of Rune has perished. That's not good. Rune's gonna really lose heart. And yeah, look at this. The elite infantry of the free peoples of Eliador are just cutting through these golden Easterlings. I I just feel like. It wasn't so much that Rune didn't have good troops. It's just he didn't have enough. It seems like his army was just too small. Oh, and the hobbits are like, ah, we want some of this. Hobbits going in. That's great. Bless those souls. Bless their souls. Bless them to death. Alright, and then we got kind of like a flanking, uh, like almost as if closing the door here. Winning the battle against Rune. The battle ready, Duna dying. They're going to be the nail in the coffin for for uh, for Rune. Uh, but the brave Easterlings are going to they're going to fight back to back. They're going to hold. And we also have some uh, Lancers doing some last last minute charges there, but they're going to get cut down. There's only two left. Oof. I love seeing the horsemen in the background swinging their their swords. Is this the general right here? No, the no, yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, never mind. That wasn't the general. <laughs> he died, and we didn't get a notification. All right, so real quick, let's go back uh, to what's going on here. It looks like Harad is the only evil faction that is very easily going to take victory here today. His cab is just running down the barding, uh, barding marksmen who are breaking from the fight. For So Dale kind of made a lot of mistakes there. Uh, I feel like... He should have relied on his archers a little bit more rather than just charging in his infantry right away. Because if you look at this kill zone over here, what do you see? It's mostly uh, troops from Dale. Now, there is a lot of uh, Southron pikemen and such, but it's I, I just feel like the troops for, for Harad were a lot cheaper. So it was less of a loss. It wasn't a fair trade. All right, so back to here. This is the last ditch effort of the Easterlings. They are getting surrounded by the Arnor pikemen. They even got hobbits in the mix. And oh, there they go. They break. Their flank has been exposed and that's going to be it for the Easterlings. And now the Ballista is getting surrounded by the Greenway Guard. Uh, rip in peace, Ballista. So the rest of the forces. So here's the High Elves. They are now ma marching their army. And, uh, you know... This has been a great battle. It's not exactly close, but this is one of my favorite things about these massive battles is that you would see a couple armies just completely outnumbered and they'll set up this like last epic stand. So I think what we're going to see here is Harad set up a, an epic stand, whatever he's got left here, which is a pretty solid force. He's got a pretty large army. He had a pretty clear victory, but unfortunately his teammates did not carry the weight and now he must take on a massive force. And I think all the players are just kind of combining their armies. So what do we have left fighting over here? Some Serpent Guard? Oh, Harad sending in their Serpent Guard. Why are they doing that? I guess he was trying to help his ally, but it's too late. Oh, now this... Oh, that's a wasted unit. He could have used them much later in the, in the battle. Oh, look at the Dunedain. The Dunedain models look so good. They really do. Alright, so here's the rest of the forces. I think what they're going to do is actually wait for their entire army to group up. And then they're going to push against what uh, what is, what is remains of Harad. So we're going to go ahead and cut through this, guys. And we'll start it back up once they begin to advance. Alright, welcome back. So here are the great armies of men, elves, and... Well, yeah, just men and elves. And uh, I think what they're going to try to do with their strategy... If you look at their battle lines here... 
I think they're going to try to just overwhelm them with numbers and outflank them because there's nothing he can do about that. What he can do is form like a noob square, like a more of a box kind of formation to try to, to you know try to protect all of his front lines but i don't even think he has enough troops to do that we do have one unit of dismounted serpent guard just standing way out here what is he doing with this unit they're about to get charged by the swan knights oh they're getting hit by artillery and they just wrecked this unit but we do have a lot of archers focusing down the swan knights the catapult is, is really going to be important here. They're loading it back up. They must get some good hits if they're going to try to win this fight. And I, yes, I know it's probably pretty doubtful that they're going to win. But you just never know. I believe, I love last stands like this. This is why I never give up in Total War. Because even though if I'm losing, and even though like defeat is, is going to happen no matter what, I just love fighting it out and just trying to kill and bring down as many as I can. Here comes a little charge from the uh, Knights of Anuminos, but they are going to be protected. They're trying to take out this catapult, at least silence it for a while. Uh, but yeah, if you look through the trees, we got a huge flanking force from the free peoples of Eriador. And now they're going in against some pikemen. Battle ready, Dunedin, a unit of five. What brave men. And this is the last stand of Harad. Fantastic. He's got his cab flanking around. He's going to try to get some uh, some hammer and anvil strikes over here. Uh, that wasn't that great. It looks like they got caught up in the uh, the dismounted Dunedine Knights. Uh, oh, he's going for the hobbits. Poor hobbits. Oh, and the catapult. <laughs> Killing two Dunedine Knights. Hold, brave men of Harad. Hold. Now the elves are getting some of this action. Oh, going after the archers. The archers are going to have to fight in melee now. The catapult is still firing, but we do have a unit of, of cav flanking around. If you look back here, come on, one more shot. One more shot for the viewers, please. Come on. No, what are you doing? Ah, oh, I, I think they're screwed. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wait, wait. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, the elves are coming. There. Oh, no, it's too late. They're dead. What a great charge. Good, good awareness, taking out that catapult. Now the Fountain Guard is taking on the Southron archers. And this is a very nice last stand from Harad. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, I give, I tip my hat to the Harad player, the Haradrim player, uh, for putting up such a great fight and being very defiant against such overwhelming odds. More Cav just flanking around. The battle lines are crumbling, and Harad will sh will soon shatter to the might, to the numbers of the free peoples of Middle Earth. Yep, his troops are breaking. Even the troll men of Harad are breaking. There's the nail in the coffin. Yeah, there's just too much, but hey, that was a hell of a defense, hell of a stand. And that is going to be it for this massive 4 vs 4 online battle. Now say what you want. I just want to go on a little rant here. Say what you want about the evil factions. Maybe you think they suck. And maybe you think the good factions are too good. But I feel like the, the evil factions here made a lot of mistakes. Especially Isengard. Not to like point them out or anything. But uh, just for learning purposes. I think Isengard if he brought more archers. He would have done a little bit better because then he could have skirmished against the uh, the elven archers. I, you know, it's tough to say because everything he like everything about this situation over here with Isengard and the elves. Oh, there goes the general. The general must be like running around trying to get last minute kills. Uh, but everything about this situation here was just not in his favor. Maybe he could have just like retreated back and then go up this hill to get the like higher ground, more even ground. But that would have left Mordor Mordor all by himself. So. I don't know. I mean, he could have done a couple things uh, to make this situation a little bit better, but overall, it's a tough, tough battle. And uh, Mordor was taking on Gondor, and Gondor is like one of the uh, best factions in the game, so not much you can do about that. So Harad, look at this, so defiant, continuing to fight. We'll just go ahead and fast forward, guys, so we can see the end results. Look at this charge, though. Boom! Oh, that was nasty. Just ripped through the center of this unit of archers. 
Where's he going? Oh, he's gonna get run down by the Swan Knights. There we go. Uh, are they still in it? No, oh, they're still in it. They're not breaking just yet. Let's see, where are they gonna go? Oh, they're running for the stakes. Oh, watch out. Oh, there we go. Okay, he's run. There we go. Okay, good. He survived. Let's see if he... Oh, Gondor. Gondor's... Okay, he's walking back. Oh, what? He just charged his men into the stakes. Okay. Rippy dippy. I think the last unit's over here. Yes, the unit of uh, tribesmen. And I think they actually... Yes, they are going to fight the spearmen here. And this is actually pretty surprising here. The tribesmen actually beat this unit. The tribesmen are pretty good. Pretty good. I, I definitely think if I'm going to play as Harad, I should bring them more often because... You know, you can use them as a skirmish unit and then use them in melee. Uh, but they're not going to win this fight because we've got more reinforcements in the background. Well, this this elf right here is pretty defiant. Oh, look, he won't die. Wow. He's, he's going to live. Wonderful. All right, so here's the end results. Uh, well done to all players here. Everyone did a great job. Uh, if we look at the good guys, we've got Gondor getting 1,000 kills. Dale doing the worst on his team, but still getting 600 kills, which is not bad. Awesome 108 getting, excuse me, getting over a thousand, and we've got the high high elves getting the most kills, which is no surprise. The elves are pretty nasty, especially with superior terrain, getting 1,519. Now looking at the evil factions, Mordor getting 600. Oh, Isengard only getting 286. Uh, we've got Rune getting 662. And, of course, we got the very defiant Harad getting 1,327. So, fantastic. He got the second most um, amount of kills, which is really great for, for, you know, for his team really letting him down or whatever. But it was a great fight. Very, very exciting. It wasn't exactly close, but it was really cool, that last stand. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.